Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is MJ De Palma. I'm the head of multicultural and inclusive marketing at Microsoft Advertising. My pronouns are she, her, and they and them. And in this inclusive marketing lab, we're going to focus on getting to the heart of inclusive customer experiences because it leads to innovation and new market growth and a more trusted customer experience. So we have two incredible examples of business thought leaders who have joined us today. I'm so excited. Sarah Horton from Tommy Hilfiger and Christina Mullen from Wonderman Thompson. My name is Sarah Horton. I'm the Senior Director of Innovation and Integrated Marketing at Tommy Hilfiger North America. I'm also the global marketing lead for Tommy Adaptive, which is an initiative that started a few years ago where we take our everyday clothing and adapt it for those with disabilities. Uh, we're all about inclusion at Tommy Hilfiger and this was just a great next step. We've It started as an initiative for children as a capsule collection and it's just grown. Hi everyone, I'm Christina Mallon. Um, I am a white female wearing a white shirt and I guess a gold scarf. What I do at Wonderman Thompson is I run all of their global inclusive design. So really helping brands figure out how do you be inclusive of different underfunded groups. And a fun fact about me is that I type with my toes. Um, my arms are fully paralyzed. Uh, so, you know, I learned how to do that and, and be, uh, you know, just as quick as having hands. Those of you that just caught that, Christina did something really inclusive that we all can learn from. When she introduced herself, she described what she was wearing and what she kind of looked like for those that can't see. And so I'll do the same. I have a, a black button down shirt with a black blazer and I have a um, pompadour kind of blonde hair and, and brown eyes. How's that? I am also a white female with long brown hair and I am wearing a white sweater uh, today. When you talk to clients, how do you make the business case rather than, you know, it's it's a nice thing to do. Yes, it drives innovation for some businesses, but would it really drive innovation for my business? How do you make that case? You know, one in five people have a disability, but four in five love someone with a disability. And these, this community has income, you know, eight to nine trillion dollars of disposable income around the world. So really giving them the numbers and showing them that disability is a part of everyone. A lot of people who don't have a disability know someone, love someone who does have a disability. So, you know, even if the product wasn't for them, they're going to share it. Sometimes they shop for them or they're a caregiver or whatnot. 80% of customers who purchased, actually it was both adaptive and non-adaptive because we have to remember just because a customer needs an adaptive shirt doesn't always mean they need adaptive pants. So a lot of these customers are cross shopping, which makes them a more valuable customer with all of our data. But 80% of them were new to the brand. And that number has stayed consistent. That was in the first two years. Christina, would love your thoughts and your knowledge from the agency side here. Do you have any insights in this area? Can you share with how, like how a marketer can go about developing a keyword strategy that is more inclusive of people with disabilities? During the research, they understood and really paid attention to how people or people with disabilities or in the disability community spoke about it and what they called it. Uh, adaptive fashion wasn't exactly what they called it at the initial because there was never this type of product. And then also understanding kind of the inside baseball language that's in within the disability community, kind of like Spoonie or, you know, person who uses a wheelchair, is not using the word wheelchair bound. So really trying to spend time to understand what the community and their kind of language around everything. I think that is very key. Shortly after we did the, the research on language and just understanding, we obviously did some of our first media campaigns and they were all pretty small, all digital. We went directly into showing those layouts and additional layouts to people who are part of past focus groups, new, new focus groups. We looked at people with disabilities, without disabilities, would this make sense? So again, we were always going back to that research and that conversation with the customer to be able to learn what, what we should do next. What is the most important learning, Christina, that you wanna share with the ad industry to help them on this journey? Always asking the question, who am I leaving out? And that's not even just for the advertising community. If you make a decision that affects somebody else, you need to always ask that question before you make that decision um, because we are constantly making decisions that affect other people. What would you call make it possible? Is it is it a brand purpose? Is it an initiative? It's a 
great you know program that isn't just a marketing initiative it's a it's a whole company initiative to really you know bring in sustainability and the conversation around sustainability but also inclusivity and how do we weave all these different things together and really push push forward um, for the future so thank you all for joining us on this segment of the inclusive marketing lab where i believe we laid out some powerful examples from sarah and christina on how to drive growth through empathy and inclusion. When you want it, when you want it.